President Clinton's toughest battle yet. Is your job on the line? Connie Chung goes behind the scenes and eye to eye with the President. Why are you in this desperate fight? And how did a budding lawyer end up on the FBI's most wanted list? She got hooked on blackjack and started robbing banks. Eye to eye with Connie Chung, next. Hi, I'm Connie Chung, and we're about to see Eye to Eye. If it's that simple, why can't you get your message across? Why are you in this desperate fight? No, no, it's his toughest fight yet, and you're in the thick of it. NAFTA, to me, is loss of a future. If anything, your job ought to be more secure. You'll go behind the scenes. You do believe oh, you yeah. can win? No oh, absolutely. As the president pulls out all the stops to convince Congress, and you'll go eye to eye as the president tries to convince you. If I could wave a wand and make every American secure and still competitive, I would do that. That is not an option. Good evening. NAFTA. Don't touch that dial. Well, I know you've heard a lot about it, maybe too much. But tonight, you're going to hear directly from the president himself, one on one. The proposed agreement would eliminate trade barriers between the U.S. and its neighbors, Mexico and Canada, and it has touched off the fiercest fight of Bill Clinton's young presidency. The argument comes down to what would happen to American jobs, maybe even yours. With a vote in Congress less than a week away, we'll take you behind the scenes at the White House, starting at the top. There are commercials all over the air for and against the trade agreement. Indulge me for a minute. I'll give you 30 seconds to make your pitch, all right? Got a stopwatch. Ready? Go. NAFTA is important for this country because it means more markets, more jobs. Exports are necessary to build the American economy. Nothing bad can happen if NAFTA passes that can't happen now. It's also important because it establishes a beachhead in all of Latin America and will help us to get trade agreements throughout the continent and with Europe and Japan. That will help our economy to grow. That's why every living former president's for it. Very good. 27 seconds. <laughs> if it's that simple, why can't you get your message across? Why are you in this desperate fight? NAFTA, to me, is loss of a future. The debate has its roots in places like this TV factory in Tennessee and has all but consumed that small town on the Potomac. How do you stop that without NAFTA? You don't even know the truth if you saw it. Who gets the money and who don't? Oh, when the safe, the market is. And it stands for the newest agreement fleecing the Americans. If you could compare this NAFTA fight to a football game, is there a Hail Mary pass? No, it's more like three yards in a cloud of dust. <laughs> <laughs> It's the current obsession of the Clinton White House, the selling of the North American Free Trade Agreement. Washington State, North Carolina, Georgia, Wisconsin. Can you guys go to your communication thing? Right now, there's nothing public on the schedule today. From the staff of the NAFTA War Room. We are thinking about sending somebody into Memphis on Friday. I've talked to John a number of times. To the Secretary of Labor, stalking the halls of the Capitol in search of votes. Just wanted to see which way the wind was blowing, how you were feeling about it. Half the folks aren't firm. We've got to know by 10, 11 o'clock Monday. We've got Two to Saturday afternoon to strategy sense. sessions for White House problems, lobbyists. The, no. the commander-in-chief no, has mobilized his okay. political forces right. for the biggest battle of his presidency. Good morning. This week I spoke with American workers and farmers who are succeeding. It's a three-prong attack. Convince Congress, the American people, and labor that NAFTA is right for the country. The American people are uncertain. They've been through a very wrenching economic period. Uh, the last 20 years, more than half our workers have basically not had a pay raise. And more and more people think their jobs are insecure. Uh, and they're concerned that they're worried about the uncertainty of the world that they face. Rightfully so. so absolutely. The resentments, the fears, the concerns that people have are well justified. This is a rapidly changing world. And our country has not responded to a lot of the needs of the American people, to the working people of this country. 
But NAFTA is not the right vehicle uh, to, to pour those resentments into. And what I have got to get across in these next few days is that everything about this treaty makes it more likely that we can sell more products to Mexico and that we can grow more jobs. Welcome to the art of the political sell, Clinton style. For members of Congress wavering on NAFTA, how about a round of golf on a raw Saturday afternoon? Now this is a little more like it. Drinks and dinner at the White House for this batch of uncommitted. Congressman Jim Cooper got the presidential pitch. The Tennessee Democrat was on the fence until an early morning run convinced him of NAFTA's virtues. He believed that you could bring enterprise to It's a people. painstaking process, a battle waged one vote at a time. One of the main criticisms is that no matter what you say, no matter what businesses say, companies will be tempted to move to Mexico because of lower wages. There's going to be a hemorrhaging of jobs across the border. I would like to trade seats with Bill Clinton. Let him come and walk in my shoes in Greenville, Tennessee, and wonder whether he's going to have a job next year if this goes through. We talked to a worker. Her name is Barbara Knight. She's 48 years old. She lives in Greenville, Tennessee. She works at the Phillips Electronics Company, which makes Magnavox TVs. Their company already has a plant in Juarez. I would like to know, Mr. Clinton, do you really think that if NAFTA went through, that I would have a future, that my children, my grandchildren would have a future? I really don't think we do. I really believe, didn't want to do this, I really believe that, that if this goes through, that our jobs are gone. I've lost jobs in the past. I say to Barbara Knight, if anything, your job ought to be more secure because Phillips now will have to have a tougher adherence to labor standards. They, those companies will have to spend more on environmental cleanup. The cost of production in Mexico will go up more quickly if NAFTA passes than if it doesn't. In addition, Phillips Electronics just invested millions this year to update its production line. So President Clinton may be right. Plant managers say it is inconceivable that they will shift jobs like Barbara Knight's to Mexico. But as Mr. Clinton knows, Barbara Knight is not alone. No NAFTA! No NAFTA! No NAFTA! No Her fears NAFTA, are the same fears that you can hear at countless rallies around the country. Uh, look, I'm not going to say that no plants will ever move down there. What I'm trying to hammer home, I don't think most Americans know this, those plants that would move down there, can do that now. There is nothing in this trade agreement that makes it more attractive to move to Mexico to sell products back into the United States with inexpensive Mexican labor. This trade agreement enables us to sell more products in Mexico. That's what it does. How many American jobs will be lost? I think we'll have a gain in American jobs. And so every major study that's been done shows a net gain of American jobs. But the Labor Department says 22,000 jobs will be lost. Your own Labor Department right. says that. Well, Can I'm you give me an will, estimate of how many I'm will be lost? I'm saying we will gain more than we will lose. I th we think, the Labor Department says 22. The outside estimate that we think from respectable sources is somewhere around 50 over a two-year period. But if, if you were the president of this country, would you deprive 200,000 people of jobs to save 20,000? So you would want, you? what you're saying is some people have to sacrifice for a greater gain. No. If I could wave a wand, if anybody could, and make every American secure and still competitive, I would do that. That is not an option. What I'm saying is that under this agreement, you'll have more people gaining jobs and fewer people losing jobs than if we don't adopt this agreement at all. The President of the United States It's no accident that every living president, secretary of state, secretary of the treasury, they're all for this. They couldn't all agree to sell America down the drain. Mr. President, did it ever occur to you that when some people saw those former presidents and those former secretaries of state, that some Americans out there might have said, if they're for it, I know I'm not for it. Sure. They could have, I'm sure some did. <laughs> Do but, you understand what, in other but, words, they elected you and they moved those people out for a reason. Did. They did, but they surely didn't think that we would disagree on every issue. You know what, I really should ask you when we were out there, when you said... With less than a week to go before the crucial vote, President Clinton is in almost constant motion, 
so many to convince, so little time. Do you have uh, a vote count, Speaker? The President told me just a few minutes ago that uh, he thought he had a few more votes. No, we have today. We have a very good day on the Hill. We have about 10 days to go on NAFTA. You've Across done, town at AFL-CIO headquarters, the big guns of big labor gather around an appropriately big table to plot the defeat of NAFTA. The enemy? The President labor helped elect. There is heavy pressure on House Democrats to vote with labor and against NAFTA, or else. You said your biggest problem is the raw muscle, the sort of naked pressure that labor forces have put on. How can you take such a swipe at labor when labor puts you in this office, and you're going to need labor later on for a number of issues, including well, health care? I didn't take a swipe at him. I just gave him credit for leading the opposition and doing it very well. But the oh, truth is... Come on, it was a swipe. No, I, I it think, was a tough swipe. I think it is wrong for members of Congress to be told that they'll never get any labor support again, even if they have 100% labor voting records, that they're going to arrange for them to have primary opponents if they vote for this. I think that's uh, stepping over the line. Well, but, but, you know, they're not playing patty cake here. They're serious. I know they're serious. That's what it's like here in Washington. That's well, the way you do it. That's right. But if I don't agree with it, I have a right to say it. Let me just put it this way. If we had a secret ballot, it would pass by 50 or 60 or 70 votes. And everybody in this town knows it. In other words, if the, if the members of Congress felt free to do what in their heart they think is right for their own people, they would vote for it. And my job is to take what is in their heart and bring it out into the open. Well, we're having a good time. Banging along. The vote count is getting closer. President Clinton, buoyed by Vice President Gore's performance in his debate with Ross Perot, smells victory. You've got, you're in the fourth quarter now, and you have seven more days to go. It's the end of the game. Pretty close to the end of the game. What are you going to do? Keep working like crazy. Talking to people who can vote for it. That's what I'm going to do. Why don't we start now? Thank you. On this morning, battle plans for the final push. But just look who's pushing for the president, the House Republican leadership, a marriage of convenience, all in the name of free trade. Do you believe you can win? You do believe you can win? Oh, absolutely. I don't know why we'd want to be spending all this uh, effort uh, if it wasn't meant, you know, winning is, uh, is the name of the game, isn't it? <laughs> I, think, I think we'll win because I think the, the majority of the Congress knows it's right for the con country. And if you don't get it passed, what can you say to them? Have you lost a great deal of power as a leader, not only internationally, but domestically? It doesn't help. It, but it's mostly that my credibility is not important. This country's credibility is important. The United States has to stand for an open, expansive view of the world. Every time we have done that, the United States has won. Today, President Clinton took time out to honor American veterans. He laid a wreath at Arlington National Cemetery at the Tomb of the Unknowns. But tomorrow, he'll step up the blitz again. All weekend, cabinet members will be on the road, and the White House says there will be a massive dialing for votes right down to the wire. Still ahead, what do you...